stabilization of the glenohumeral joint. So static stabilization means the stabilization of glenohumeral joint when muscles are not contracted. That is when the muscle is in relaxed state, what structures stabilize the glenohumeral joint? As we know, when the arm is by the side, the humerus and the upper limb is pulled downward by gravity. So muscle electrical activity during static position will be nil. So why humerus does not dislocate inferiorly because of the gravitational pull? Because the glenoid is inclinated superiorly as we have already discussed in the anatomy. So therefore there is slight stabilization because of the inclination of the glenoid cavity. The resultant pull of gravity compresses the humeral head to the lower glenoid fossa. Because of the slight inclination of the glenoid cavity, the head of the humerus is compressed on the inferior aspect of the glenoid fossa. Next stabilization is because of the vacuum that is created with the capsule. So the glenohumeral capsule creates a negative pressure inside the joint because of which the head of the humerus is sucked in the glenoid fossa. Next structure which stabilizes the glenohumeral joint in, in static position is the coracohumeral ligament. It doesn't allow inferior as well as superior translation of the head of the humerus. Another point which is not mentioned here is the glenoid labrum which we already discussed that glenoid labrum increases the depth of the glenoid fossa therefore it gives more surface for the head of the humerus to attach to the glenoid fossa so therefore glenoid labrum also increases the static stability of the glenohumeral joint now coming to the important topic of shoulder kinetics that is the dynamic stabilizers of the glenohumeral joint first dynamic stabilizer is the deltoid muscle all three fibers combine to create an abduction movement of the glenohumeral joint. But deltoid alone is not able to create an abduction movement of the glenohumeral joint. Why is that so? Because deltoid attachment that is from the acromion process, spine of the scapula, lateral clavicle gets inserted to the deltoid tuberosity. Because of this attachment, when the muscle contracts, it is going to create a upward force that is translatory force, which is called as Fx. Whereas there is a small rotatory force created by the deltoid, which is Fy. So deltoid, when it contracts, it is going to create more of a translatory force or parallel force, which is directed upward. As you can see here, Fx, it is uh, translating the humerus upward. So there cannot be a pure abduction without help of other muscles which are rotator cuff muscles. Now this two force creates a resultant force which is tagged as FD here. The resultant force is more towards the translation or translatory force which is pulling the humerus upward. Because the FX force is more than FY force created by deltoid. So one more point here, this Fx force is translating the humeral head upward and it is not compressing the humeral head to the glenoid fossa. Therefore, the Fx is not responsible for the stability of the glenohumeral joint, whereas Fy which rotates the humerus away can create some compression force to the glenohumeral joint. So the important point we need to remember is deltoid when it contracts, it creates two force that is one translatory force upward which is also a shear which is also called as a shearing force fx and a rotatory force perpendicular to the glenohumeral joint which is also called as rotatory torque fy now as we have already understood that deltoid alone is not able to create the abduction movement because of more translatory force rather than the rotatory force so the glenohumeral joint needs the function of supraspinatus so supraspinatus force, unlike other three rotator cuff muscles, that is infraspinatus, teres minor and subscapularis, it has a small superior translatory component Fx, whereas deltoid had a large Fx component, but it has a large compressing force or a rotatory force Fy, 
which is pulling the humerus towards the glenoid fossa and because of its attachment the mechanical advantage is large as the muscle comes from the supraspinous fossa and gets inserted to the greater tubercle therefore when the muscle contracts it is going to pull the humeral head towards the glenoid fossa as well as create rotatory movement of the humeral head so supraspinatus is a important muscle for creating abduction of the glenohumeral joint as well as stabilization of the glenohumeral joint as it creates a large rotatory force and a compressive force that is fy the supraspinatus muscle is independently able to abduct the glenohumeral joint to full range along with stability of the glenohumeral joint now we have understood that the supraspinatus and deltoid muscle is responsible for creating the abduction of the glenohumeral joint which is rolling of the head of the humerus upward but there must be some forces which will pull the head of the humerus downward to create a pure abduction that is to create the inferior slide of the humeral head during abduction as we have already learned in arthrokinematics that during abduction the head of the humerus has to translate or slide inferiorly so what are the muscles that are responsible for creating the inferior slide of the humeral head while the supraspinatus and deltoid create the abduction these muscles are infraspinatus subscapularis and teres minor muscle these muscles also create a rotatory and compressive force the fy or the rotatory component force the force that it creates is the fx force which is downward translatory force that is pulling the humeral head downward on the glenoid fossa the resultant force of fx and fy is the fits force which is which is resultant combined force of infraspinatus subscapularis and teres minor muscle the experiment was done by sarki and marder in the cadaver where they found out that if the infraspinatus subscapularis and teres minor muscle were inactive or not functioning then there will be only superior shift of the humerus because of the action of the deltoid so there has to be a uh, inferior pull which is the fits force which creates a inferior slide of the head of the humerus on the glenoid fossa so you can see the line of force of all the individual rotator cuff muscles you can see supraspinatus is pulling upward and medially or superiorly and medially whereas infraspinatus teres minor is pulling medially and posteriorly and subscapularis is pulling medially and anteriorly so rotator cuff muscles are the important dynamic stabilizers of the glenohumeral joint along with deltoid and long head of biceps so biceps also is responsible for stability of this joint as the tendon blends as the long head of biceps tendon blends with the capsule there is a small space in the shoulder area which is called as rotator interval this space is not covered by the supraspinatus not covered by the rotator cuff therefore this space is also known for its vulnerability where it is a common site for anterior dislocation this space is covered up by the long head of biceps and coracohumeral ligament as you can see this is the space which is a rotator interval space rotator cuff is not covering this space therefore it is vulnerable now let's check the synergic movement of this rotator cuff muscles and deltoid while while there is a dynamic movement of the glenohumeral joint that is during abduction so you can see the supraspinatus is pulling medially and superiorly deltoid has more translatory force upward whereas supraspinatus has more rotatory force and infraspinatus subscapularis and teres minor is pulling the head of the humerus or sliding the head of the humerus downward or inferiorly so when all these muscles combine you can have a pure rotatory movement of the head of the humerus creating a abduction movement so this was a important topic and mostly asked during exams
that is static stabilization of the glenohumeral joint and dynamic stabilization so these are the preferences which you can go through to understand in depth of all the topics which we have discussed through this video lectures thank you